Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we're talking about our C5 HP package. First off, what's it's rated for? 1500 verbal horsepower. We've got a 71 over an 88. We're looking for that 12 to 1300 range out of Rob's truck. When Rob rolled in, he added what's equivalent to our C3 HP package, which isn't no slouch, almost 700 rural horsepower. Check out that video. So guys, you got to see the dyno run on it. Almost 700 verbal horsepower. It's a very desirable horsepower, but just like all of us, if you're in it, you're in it. And Rob's in it 100%. He wants more power. 700 horsepower is definitely something you can have a lot of fun with, but today we're gonna cover what's going on Rob's build. We're gonna talk about air, we're gonna talk about the engine, and we're gonna talk about the fuel. First thing we're talking about is the engine. Now there's a lot of components that go into making the entire engine. Starting at the bottom, working our way up. What type of crankshaft did we use? It still has a 6.7 liter Cummins crankshaft. Why didn't we change the crank? Because these cranks are proven for big horsepower, like 2,000, 3,000 horsepower. We're not gonna hit that, so we're staying with the factory one. The camshaft. The 188 220 Hamilton camshaft is a proven cam that we've ran personally in low horsepower, 600 horsepower truck, and upward of 1,000 rural horsepower on our personal trucks. We're going with that cam. It will still drive around the track nice, and when you race it, you're gonna get all the flow that you need out of the cam. Moving up, what type of engine is it? Now we said it had a 6.7 liter Cummins engine in it. This is a Waggler competition deck plated series engine. So you can see this plate right here. That is a one inch spacer. Why for the one inch spacer? Because if we put a spacer there, it changed it up, right? Yes. So you can take a 6.7 liter Cummins engine and you can sleeve it. That was an option. If you're in that 900 to 1000, you'll put sleeves in all these pistons. So whenever you do that, you got to go in and you got to bore out that cylinder. When you bore it out, you push the sleeve in, it gets really thin because you just put something in place where something used to go. It gets thin with this big turbocharger system on here, we could crack a sleeve. We don't want to do that. So what do we do? We have a 5.9 liter piston in there. So we went small and we put this big thick sleeve in there. Then to get back our compression, there's a one inch longer rod inside here. You see this one inch spacer? That's how it achieves it. So you drop the sleeves in, you have a 5.9 liter piston in it, which is smaller, because it used to be a 6.7, but you gain one inch of stroke. So you get back your compression. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, hey, for sure reach out to the guys at Waggler Competition. Moving on to the next thing. Who's our guys that's gonna make the cylinder head? Miller's Machine Shop. We've trusted these guys over seven years of making all of our cylinder heads. This is a one millimeter over factory size intake and exhaust valve, 35 millimeter to be exact. So we've got all the valves underneath of it so that way we can flow some big power. Now it's a 5.9 liter, don't get confused, but on a 6.7 liter, they're two millimeters over. On a 5.9, because now this engine is actually a 5.9 setup, we have a one millimeter over. What type of hardware do we have in this cylinder head? 14 millimeter studs from Waggler Competition to keep this dude seated down. It does have fire rings that seat in the cylinder head and fire rings that seat in the actual engine. So we talked about all those components that make the engine. What type of air goes into making that big power? Let's check out these turbochargers. So the one subject everybody wants to talk about on their diesel engines is how big is your turbocharger or in Rob's instance, how big are your turbochargers? First off, let's name them. This is your secondary, this is your primary. The job of the secondary turbocharger is this, to bring in as much air as possible. It's actually physically bigger and it needs to be, why? It's gonna bring air in here, that's an 88 millimeter turbocharger. It's gonna shoot it over to the little guy. The housing is a little bit smaller. 
It's a 71 millimeter wheel. So you would think, why not just put an 88 over an 88, right? You got these two big massive turbochargers. You don't want to do that. Why? Because it's going to be slow. It's going to be laggy. It's going to drive like shit. So how do you make better understanding of that? What's this? Exhaust manifold here. You got a lot of gases in here. It's like a gerbil running a race. It's going to spool up here in a smaller turbocharger. The way it spools quickly. Once it spools quickly, it runs out, it runs down here, and you've got this big open turbocharger to spool. The gerbil hits it and goes. He finds no resistance in it. That way this wheel spins harder and faster. And when it does, it shoots all that forced air right in here and you're making power because you want to keep the drive pressure low and the boost pressure where it needs to be. There's a ratio. To get a better understanding of this, you can check out our power stroke with the compound setup on it. I go in a little bit more detail. So this is an 88 over a 71 primary secondary turbocharger. Now, what type of fuel is going to spool those turbochargers? Moving on to the fueling side of things, we will be running a dual fueler setup. Right now, we've got the factory CP3 located here in its original location. Up top, you're going to have the 12 millimeter dynamite diesel CP3 helping the guy out. So that way we can get all the fuel to the rail and over to the injectors. Now, the injectors are the cool thing, right? It's like a camshaft for the guys with the gas burner. How big are your injectors? Well, Rob's truck will run at a 250% over factory. Most of the guys really want to just go overboard with this. They want the black smoke and all that. Well, we've got a super expensive engine here. We do not want to put a big injector in there and melt this son of a bitch down, right? We've got some big air here. We want to keep the fuel realistic because this is set up for exactly what he's looking for, 12 to 1300 horsepower. We want our EGTs to stay in check and we really don't want a lot of smoke out of this race truck. That's not our goal. Our goal is to make a efficient 12 to 1300 horsepower, quick spooling, and something that idles nice, drives nice. That way this truck does exactly its job out of a C5 HP package. So that hits the high notes of our C5 HP package. We talked about the engine, we talked about the big air, and the small fuel, right? We're going after 1200 rural horsepower. Got to get this dude finished up. There's a lot of time that goes into making over a thousand rural horsepower. A lot of people throw that around like, oh, I drive a thousand horsepower diesel truck. Well, here, the fun part about it is after we build it, it goes on the dyno. And this is where you guys want to like subscribe because I'm going to break out my fire suit. I'm going to get me a helmet. I'm going to get Rob down here. And we got to back it up. We say we're building 1200 horsepower. We got to build 1200 horsepower. Make for sure you like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you got a big high horsepower truck, big air, big fuel, drop the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you back here next week at Point Blank Performance.